Hi everybody. In this tutorial, we're going to introduce the idea of subsurfaces on components in OpenVSP. Now a subsurface is basically a rectangle or ellipse or a line defined in UW coordinates on the surface of a body in OpenVSP. Now you can't have subsurfaces on something like a hinge or a blank because those are not three-dimensional closed surfaces. So it doesn't make a lot of sense to try and put something there. Now, as a bit of a demonstration, let's take a look at a wing and click on the sub tab here where you'll find our control surface type that's added as a subsurface. Now, you can see the tag here is that it's inside this boundary and that it's using a couple of surfaces. We're going to go into more detail about this particular surface later, but notice that when it's selected here in the list, it highlights it on the body. If we click on pod and go to sub, you can see that the first one, line zero, is this value of u equals 0.55, and so it's right here on the surface. Now, keep in mind that this is a line subsurface type, but because we've defined it in the u direction, it's for all w, so it wraps around in a circle. Now, there are a number of ways that you can add these in a few types that we can look into in greater detail later, but notice that for each type, you can do either a greater or less in the case of a line, or if we were to add, say, a rectangle, and move it around, you'll see that we can have, say, inside or outside, because this happens to be a closed boundary. And then we have a way to position these things. So for any of the closed boundaries, you can see that we can slide around the center of the U direction and the center of the W direction. And then we can change, say, the length or the W length. And then you can also rotate these and shift them. Now, something to pay attention to, particularly for, say, wings or body components for that matter, is if you adjust the W position or the U position to where it starts to smash down and it needs to go into a, like a negative or wrap around to the other side, it won't do it. If we zoom in and look, you can see that these are being collapsed down to the U equals zero position. And if we did this to a wing, it would do the same thing. It would just be here on this camber line. So be careful when you're trying to position subsurfaces right here on the top. You may actually have to create two and then add them together later. Um, but that is a, a bit of a demonstration on what's going on. The, the subsurfaces are honored by several different analyses within OpenVSP and different export capabilities. So things like CompGeom or CFD Mesh or even uh, DGenGeom will acknowledge where these subsurfaces are and use them in the analyses. So if we come to CompGeom and choose subsurfaces and hit execute, and then we can shade this, you'll see that each of these subsurfaces is tagged in a different way. Mm -hmm. So because we have, say, control surfaces as one, we have the wing surfaces, and we have these two other areas. On the pod itself, because we had one value that said, I want everything less than this line and greater than this line, we have this overlapping region in the middle where it's true for both. And of course, here's our rectangle that we set. Now, if we look down here in the result where it wrote everything out in text, you can see that for the pod, we have two regions that are larger. And then because we have subsurface line zero and one, it's saying that all of these conditions are true. And this is the area of that section. So you can see how subsurface lines, ellipses, and rectangles can be used to identify patches on the surface of a component and then flag it for use later. Of course, we'll get into greater detail of each of these subtypes in other videos, but this serves as a bit of an introduction to the concept.